Well, coming up on today's show, one car maker wants to make their hometown into an electric city. Why this year was the year that really brought the EV to the mainstream, and why cash isn't the friend of electric cars. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily, Thursday, twentieth of December. My name is Martin Lee, and I've been through every EV story I can find today. Picked out the ones I think you need to know about, and we'll get into the news in just a second. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. If you haven't checked them out yet, and you're in the USA, you are very lucky to have that website. It's all about buying and selling、uh, EVs, and without having to sift through tons of fossil cars, because it's a purpose-built marketplace, and it's purely about electric cars. And whilst you're on there. You'd be surprised what you can learn and research about them as well. Check out myev.com. Well, the rollout of the latest Tesla software includes something else that I didn't mention yesterday: Pole Position, a brand new version of the existing Tesla. Rati game, the old Atari game、uh, with、uh, a Tesla twist there,、uh, based on the arcade classic. This one being set on Mars and appropriately named Mars Madness, a heavily digitised Falcon 9 rocket. A、uh, rocket across the track before the race begins, allowing drivers to speed around and take in the regular scenery. Watch out for the billboards. Says Astro Jane, writing for Tesla Rati. Video game controllers are now compatible with the Atari games via the front USB port. And of course, if you are、uh, on playing pole position, you just turn the steering wheel of your car to move the car left and right. I must admit, it's a little bit. Oversensitive, as it, it's pretty easy to go off the track, but that's kind of half the fun of it. It is all about making cars just make you smile. There aren't any other car makers out there putting Atari games into their cars and letting you letting you race by using the steering wheel. Really good stuff. If you've got、uh, any of those updates and you want to let me know what you think of them. Whether it's the toilet humour that we talked about before as well, you can email me anytime. Hello at evnewsdaily dot com if you've got that update and you want to share your thoughts. Well, moving on to one automaker that has big plans for their home city, Opel, or maybe I should say Vauxhall, depending on. Where you live around the world, have already announced the electrification of their first car going all EV, the small city car that is the Corsa. But now they want to turn their home city into an electric city with 1,300 charging stations over the next couple of years. They'll be located in all districts and residential areas on Opel premises on the campus of the university and in the residential estates of Rüsselsheim. Which is probably how I don't say their home city. In the parking areas of supermarkets and shopping centres, and on the premises of the municipal clinics as well. This ambitious project, for which the partners have received official grants of about 13 million euros, will be realised in multiple steps by 2020. Well, going forward, each publicly accessible charging point will service 72 inhabitants. That's the density of these charging points, creating the highest density of charging stations in relation to the number of inhabitants, not only in Germany, but in all of the European Union. In addition, another 400 charging points are going to be installed on privately owned land. 350 of those on Opel premises. In comparison, Hamburg, currently the leading German city with regards to charging infrastructure, has seventy seven hundred and eighty five public charging points for one point eight million inhabitants. So Opel deciding to invest and go one bigger. Well, many hundreds bigger. One thousand three hundred charging stations for their、uh, people who live in their home city. One charger for every seventy-two people. How lovely! When I was、uh, a quick digression, by the way, and I did. I've done, I've done a fair few miles recently, actually, including a two hundred and fifty mile trip, and every charger that I pulled up to was free, which is bittersweet, isn't it? You want to see chargers being used, but equally. You don't want to turn up to a charger and see a queue. Nothing makes your heart sink more. Oh, there was only one, by the way, a Polar 
Ultra Charger. It was a 50 kilowatt charger. If you're not in the UK, it's a network here, and they're all new chargers. Really lovely, actually, and uh, pretty reliable too. But there was somebody had just pulled up and plugged in, and they were disappearing off for a, a drink. And I thought, oh, do I head on to the next one, or do I just sit and wait here? So I sat it out. They got to 80%, then 85 then 86, then 87. I think, oh, come on, you're on a rapid charger. Unplug at 80. Anyway, I'm not whinging. I'm just saying. So, uh, moving on then. On the horizon, there is a wave of electric cars which are truly built for everyone. As we get to the end of 2018, then people are starting to look back at what a year it's been. What a definitive year for EVs. And in many ways, a turning point. Uh, the real change comes from the affordable cars, says Engadget. Now, Engadget are recommending you go get yourself a test drive of the Chevy Bolt. They say that's the one which is driving EVs into the mainstream, at least until the $35,000 Tesla Model 3 arrives. They say maybe that you won't buy a Bolt now, but at least if you've test-driven one, you'll have the real-world experience of that electric talk, that knowledge will be there when other cars that you can afford come on the market. And there are way more cars coming on the market. Without Tesla, they say, this simply wouldn't have happened in the last 12 months, or at least not as quickly as it has. The $35,000 Model 3 might not be quite ready yet. We know it's coming in just a matter of weeks. But it spurred the introduction of other cars that really do hit the sweet spot. The electric car revolution, says Engadget, may have started years ago, but it's taken a while to get to the point where regular people like you and I can finally take part. I do agree with that. And a lot of the focus goes on new cars and $35,000 Model 3s and 30000 this. I would add that used cars, by the way, are another great way to get into EVs because the drivetrain, the powertrain, just doesn't get the same use as a fossil car. You're just not going to have to worry about the mileage so much. I mean, look, I bought, well, we bought my wife, her Renault Zoe, little city car, if you're not sure what the Zoe is from where you're listening to the podcast around the world. Renault Zoe, small city car, perfect for her just dashing around her work commute, running errands, all that kind of stuff. It's got about 100 miles on the battery, a little bit less this time of year, to be honest with you, when the air conditioning's on max because it's sort of three or four degrees C here at the moment. But we bought that second hand. We bought it second hand. It was less than two years old. It's on a 66 plate, so it was uh, it was just ticked over, actually. It was November 2016 it was new. So it's just ticked over being two years old. Inside, still feels new. Bodywork outside is amazing. Paid £5,900 for it. Now, that's on a battery lease. I'll, I'll give you that. So every month, £50 comes out and goes to Renault. And that's not for everyone. I get that. It's not for everyone. But it's it's fine by me. Because the only bit of the car that can really go wrong that would be an expensive fix is the battery and the powertrain. And hey, I don't own that bit. Renault own that bit. I'm leasing it off them. And so that's why you get what would be a very expensive car for not much money. Look, there's six grand for a car that is loaded with technology, less than two years old. Do consider used cars. I know everyone gets very excited about new cars, and hey, me too. But if you want to get in an EV and, and you haven't thought about that option, de definitely check out the used cars at myev.com. I never miss a chance to plug it, do I? Because you might be surprised how you can get yourself in an EV for maybe less money than you thought. Well, talking about EVs' impact on the economy, EVs and their, they're in their infancy at the moment, but the people have bought them thus far. It's fair to say, technologically ahead of the curve, and perhaps, okay, no, definitely, I would say more affluent than the mean, right? And so, when you think about what that's going to be doing to the way people fuel their cars, thestreet.com has an opinion. Ask any gasoline station attendant, they say, and how many people pay for gas in cash. And you might not have thought about the percentage, but it's, according to some stats, around 15, one five, 15 percent of people uh, at the pump are paying in cash. So what does that have to do with electric cars? Well, there's nowhere that you can charge an electric car and then go and pay in cash if you are using any of the charges that require your mobile phone, your smartphone, an RFID card, a tag, a card. Go use the app, that kind of thing. They all have their own form of electronic payment or a membership card, but none of them allow you to go and 
hand over some cash for the energy that you just bought. Or if you know of somewhere, then do let me know in the comments or email. And the street.com say this is a huge problem. There's going to be people that never want to move forward. I would... I would offer a slightly different opinion, by the way. And recently, we took a uh, an EV fact-finding trip to Sweden. And when we got there, and we took a cab ride, actually. Cab ride's about 45 minutes. And I'd got some cash out because, you know, you're going to a foreign country. And then when the cab ride was over and he showed us the fare... And I got money out. He just looked, the cab driver just looked at me, was like, oh, no, no. You, have I got to go to the bank and pay money in? Sweden is almost, well, everywhere that we went in those few days, a cashless society. And you know what? It felt good. It felt fine. I never felt, I, I, I bought a chocolate bar and a bottle of water. It was like it was know, like a couple of dollars equivalent. And just tapped my card. It was all contactless. And just tap this, tap that, tap your phone, tap your card, and the micro payments coming out. And I must admit, it felt very natural. And at no point did I think, oh, I don't like this vision of the future. But the street.com would disagree with me. They're saying that EVs are going to leave a certain subset of people behind. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know. Chargers are getting smarter, and now a London-based EV charging manufacturer today announced the release of their smart home charger, according to Utility Week. They're writing about a company called Anderson EV, and I must admit, the thing about the Anderson chargers, uh, and I've never really looked into them that much, is the style. If Apple designed chargers... I think they'd look like this. Anderson with an E-N at the end of it, by the way. If you want to check them out and Google them, they make really beautiful products, but I've never really looked at the tech specs of them, never having considered buying one for my house. The company says their new product is Wi-Fi compatible, and it's able to connect to things like your solar panels, if you've got some PV, and power walls, maybe you've got some home storage, to allow the EV to become a, what they say, a zero carbon mode of transport. The user is able to monitor and manage your charging from a mobile or laptop via the subscription-free app. It's called Connect with a K. Nice. Uh, The app gives information on current status, live energy use, the cost of charging, and you can directly manage charging from the solar panels as well. It allows remote locking and unlocking of the unit if other members of the household want to charge. Or I'm thinking, actually, maybe you put this on some sort of public network there's a big app in the uk here it's called zap map they've got a thing called zap home where if if you want you can put your home charging station on the map and people if they're desperate if they're in the area they can come and charge at your house and you know you can charge them for that i I've never really done that, but I must look into that more. Seems like a great idea. It's called the A2, by the way, this new Anderson charger. It includes, this is interesting, right? Grid load balancing capabilities. It allows businesses and big venues to use information provided by the app to control the power going into your EV, which avoids grid overload. And this, we're going to be talking about this a load more in 2019. We're definitely going to make some interviews, some special shows in 2019, all about how chargers will be integral to the grid going forward. And that will directly educate people, by the way, because there are so many mainstream news articles going, millions of EVs are coming, we'll need 20 more nuclear stations, and the world is going to melt down because of cars. Actually, there is not only really good arguments for why EVs help the grid, There is there are some studies where people have crunched the numbers and say actually the more evs there are the better it is for you could actually need less generation in the future rather than more so uh, i'll uh, i'll put a link to the article in the show notes maybe wherever you're listening around the world to the podcast you've got your own local charging pre- uh, charge point producers who are doing something similar uh, but some interesting things being done here in the uk right two final stories and uh, we're going to give two gold medals to norway today firstly norway's getting closer to building the world's first carbon free cement plant cement plants are not a pretty sight and one located in southern norway is no exception but inside the gray walls of its office buildings the employees are quietly planning a revolution that could have worldwide repercussions 
In 2013, the factory set out an ambitious goal. They want to become the first zero-emission cement plant in the world. So first gold star to Norway. I know it's not about EVs, but it is about sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so many people say, well, you know, EVs might be clean, but what about the factories they're built in and the factories that... So an example that things, even the factories that make the cement, that build the other factories are going zero emission. And finally, second gold star going to Norway, uh, High on AS has been awarded grants under a new pilot scheme for the development and realisation of two maritime projects, a high speed ferry and a short sea freighter. The ambitions of both projects are zero emission propulsion at sea via fuel cells using hydrogen produced from electrolysis based on renewable energy. Not one, but two gold stars to Norway today. Thank you very much for listening, as always. And thank you for joining in with our uh, question of the week. If you would like to chip in, do it before Sunday. Email me before Sunday. That's when we'll read out this one. Thanks to myev.com for setting question of the week. As always, it is this, this week. What are your desired but realistic specs for a new EV? And please stick to the topics of range, price and performance. Just those three things. Otherwise, we could be here all day. What, are you, what is your desired but realistic specs for range, price and performance? Let me know your thoughts. Email hello at evnewsdaily.com. Use the comments on YouTube or the website or myev.com. And in the meantime, while you're doing that, uh, I want to remind you there are 138 patrons of the show who bring you this podcast for free. They are patrons at patreon.com, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com, slash evnewsdaily. And I'd love to add your name to the list. 12 more to go till 150, you know, not many. There are 331 episodes of the show online for free from wherever you get podcasts from. If you can subscribe on any of those, including YouTube, if you subscribe, well, it just means you get the show first and free and automatically. And if in return you can leave a little review, it just does so much to help get the podcast up those ranking systems. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.